So your player has just done an extremely good job of role playing their way through an intense social encounter that you weren't expecting them to get through and they've made the game a lot easier for the party in the coming future for the next few games. They've managed to convince this noble against all odds that they should ally with them and now they have a small army to take on the bad guy in comparison to their small force that's been dedicated to them all this time. Now that they've amassed this extra group and it's all thanks to one player and their extremely smart thinking and social etiquette that they managed to pull off during roleplay, how do you reward them? Uh, that's what I'm here for today. I'm going to be talking about some ways that you can perhaps give said player a reward for these like clutch moments that players inevitably pull because they're that good. Creative problem solving is one of the main appeals of D&D to me and I feel like whenever a player does that, they feel great. They feel like they've solved the problem and they can progress easier and that they are managing to go through the game and almost beat it in a way. Because even if we don't like to admit it, D&D is slightly competitive. And I feel like as a DM, if you reward it more obviously, then your players are more likely to try and think outside the box and try more crazy stuff. I myself am a little guilty of not exactly rewarding my players mechanically as much as I would like to. I find that I don't hand out inspiration that much and experience rewards are little to none outside of combat for me, but I definitely think that I should be doing more to reward my players and their smart quick thinking and stuff like that. Inspiration is obviously the classic way of doing this, which the DMG goes much more into, which is if your player does... Um, some interesting roleplay stuff, or cracks up everyone at the table, or generally creates a more fun experience for everyone else there, they're rewarded with inspiration. And I feel like that's a perfect way of doing it. And if you're with a new group, perhaps, it might encourage all of these new people who don't know each other to interact with each other more, uh, make for a more friendly environment between everyone else, and bond quicker. Inspiration helps with that, weirdly. Inspiration is a great tool that can make anything better. and. Frankly, I don't use it enough, which is something that, going forward, I really want to try and do more. Inspiration, of course, is a free reroll, so if someone's done a, a bad job and hexed something up, they did a cool thing earlier, so now they get to try and continue that coolness. And if that fails again, then fate didn't want them to, but if it succeeds, they know that they helped themselves succeed later on and influence a dice roll just by saying a really funny joke or doing extremely well in a combat scenario and managing to pull off something crazy. Um, and inspiration is, it's a good feeling whenever you get it because it, it, it's kind of an affirmation of your decisions as a player and as of you as a person and your DM kind of approving of whatever's going on, if you will. Inspiration is very good and a good tool to hand out, but there's plenty of other ways to go about it as well. If you're running the experience system, then of course you can reward experience for almost anything that happens. You can even take it away. <laughs> Although I wouldn't recommend it. Players really don't like that unless it's absolutely deserved when they do that. For example, they flee from a very obviously survivable encounter and miss out on an opportunity to perhaps help their party and deliberately no power of assisting them and overall, you know, be a bad party member. It's not hard to be a good party member in D&D, and I think that definitely rewarding that good party member mentality with experience as well works. For instance, I think that one way that you could perhaps reward inspiration or experience or anything else is if a player literally thinks, I can't exactly think of a reason that my character would help here, but I'm gonna anyway. You know, that sort of stuff where sometimes D&D does force you to have your character to be a little more malleable so that everyone else at the table can have more fun with you and you can have more fun with them, stuff like that. And if you're a player that kind of goes along with that more, I feel like a DM should reward that. There's plenty of other ways that that could be rewarded as well. I think that one way that I do want to try, I, ha I literally just came up with this about 10 minutes ago, just randomly brainstorming a bunch of stuff, but in a way to kind of encourage, you know, some of your party to perhaps uh, do better, you could literally say to them at the start of the adventure, every treasure hoard in the game starts empty. And depending on what level you are, I won't award inspiration or experience or anything like that, but whenever you defeat a large foe and gain their treasure hoard, for instance, or whatever other form that that might take, it's larger now. If you're 
fighter does a badass suplex on someone else and manages to suplex them off a cliff or something, that adds 500 gold to the hoard. If another player manages to circumvent their way through not getting arrested, there's a common magic item among the horde now, and there's also a potion of healing. Stuff like that. You don't have to specifically plan out a whole table for it or come up with like, you know, all of these complex ifs, whats, and buts, but just maybe consider as you go along, perhaps filling out this, like, uh, the next treasure hoard that your party might come across so that in the future they'll be able to get better rewards. And I feel like it's a way that's kind of balanced and doesn't make the party feel like one of them's better than another because granted some people might have contributed more to this treasure hoard that they found for defeating this young gold dragon and they are therefore going to feel better as a person for doing so they've done all these cool things but that player that doesn't really participate as much they still get to reap the rewards just as much and even though that does sound a little unfair to those that have spent a lot of effort to kind of stick true to the game and stuff like that and make it better for everyone it makes everyone on an even playing field regardless of if some people are more proactive about trying to go for these crazy moments and entertain people at the table a lot more and it culminates in more rewards for everyone so it makes it a much more of a team building sort of adventure if you will because at the end of it they can the party can think did did that really cool like double takedown we did on that lich like give us that staff of fire and that kind of makes them think if we do more cool things like that and make for more memorable moments then maybe we'll get a uh, the archmage eye mr dm <laughs> but yeah I, I definitely want to try that now i i think that that sounds amazing i might talk to my players about doing that that sounds very cool and it, it, it i i think that as an incentive treasure is who one of the best ones that you can ever give your players other than their own character progression because usually character builds that people make and plan for the future often mean their certain level ups and stuff like that and the way that their character progresses and not external items but if at the start of an adventure I, i've talked about this in the past you can totally ask your dm hey at some point in the adventure could i perhaps find this magic item or my character is actually looking for this magic item how can you perhaps integrate this maybe that's where it is and stuff like that and you might not get it until 30 sessions later when you get to the next treasure hoard because the entire party was being very lame <laughs> i don't want to put it like that but um you kind of get what I mean, right? I'm trying not to be mean about it. The cooler your party is, the more rewards they get at the end of it. They might not see it more directly in comparison to the inspiration and experience reward method, but that treasure hoard feeling is so good. When, when you've defeated the big bad or you've gone to their lair, snuck past them and found your way there, and there's a buttload of treasure just waiting to be taken by you. That's one of the staples of D&D, I find. And those like rewards for completing the dungeon and completing everything else make it well worth it. Even Tomb of Horrors has probably, despite the most scummy dungeon tactics, one of the most rewarding ends in terms of its magic items for the recommended level that it provides, which is 11 and up. So if you're level 20, then the rewards are pretty extraordinary still. Legendary items up the wazoo, magical staffs, magical everything. And I feel like the more magic stuff the party has, the more that they feel like they've achieved, you know what I mean? We, we earned this. We didn't just go through the motions of the story. We found this, we took it, we added it to our kit and stuff like that. And it makes for a more rewarding thing when you've ended the campaign and you can see your list of 20 plus magic items each. And if you're using said treasure method, then it might make them feel more like they earned it themselves. This was a random shorter video that I just kind of wanted to throw out there as some advice on how to perhaps reward your players. The main thing that I struggle is actually remembering to do so when I'm invested in the moment of trying to make the game a game rather than a social experience. And I think that that's something I need to work on in terms of detaching from that and making it more of a social experience rather than this theatrical event if you will every day and that's something that I can't exactly give advice for I would if I could but like it's just something you gotta try 
In any case, thank you for watching. If you liked it, then you've got to click the button that says that you do. And maybe even subscribe for more videos like this, where I just ramble about random stuff for no reason. You can also comment down below if you have any additional ways that you could perhaps reward your players beyond what I've talked about, which, frankly, I only did three methods. There's dozens out there, at least. And finally, if you want to discuss with other people of the community, then you can join our Discord, which is in the description. Thank you for watching, though. Uh, see ya in the next one. Au revoir.